Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully your corn yields have been going up, up, up for the past 10 years, 20 years, really all the time that you're farming. But how'd you like to take them up even faster? We're going to talk about some of the best tips that we've heard from high yielding corn farmers across the country. We're also going to talk a little about overall alfalfa management today. We don't talk about it real often on the show, but alfalfa is an incredibly important crop around the world and there are several things you can do to increase production. I hope you don't have to take our weed of the week out of an alfalfa field because that would be a real challenge. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed if it gets on your farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about a handy app you can use on your smartphone or your tablet, whether you're a farmer or even a non-farmer. It's the Ag PhD Nutrient Deficiency app. And I know, you're thinking, nutrient deficiencies, I hope I never see them on my farm. Guess what, you probably are seeing some of these things. Maybe you just didn't know exactly what that symptomology was. And you think, oh, this is just drought related what I'm seeing in the field, or ah, it looks like this because I've had so much rain. When in reality, it may be one of the nutrients in your soil that isn't getting into your crop, or one of the nutrients that is deficient in your soil that's now becoming deficient in the plant. Identification is really the first step to solving the problem. All right, with the Nutrient Deficiency app, you can look at the pictures of nutrient deficiencies. You can find out a little bit more about different nutrients and why they're important in plants. This is just so incredibly important. We talk about plant nutrients. We talk about fertility all the time on the show. And I don't care if you just have a lawn, you have a garden, uh, or you're a big farmer. Nutrients are incredibly important. And, you know, one of the things about this, too, a lot of people will say, well, we, we just want to have the right nutrients and the right fertilizers so we raise a good crop, have good yields. Okay, I get that. That's important. But here's the other thing. Where do a lot of our crops go? They get fed to livestock. And if you have a more nutritious crop that's getting fed to the livestock, well, all of a sudden you have a more nutritious uh, animal in the end that needs fewer other vitamins, basically. So this is incredibly important. We just think that you should download this app, take a look at all these different nutrients that are out there, and really study up on this thing. So when you're out in fields, you can identify one nutrient deficiency from the next nutrient deficiency. Uh, it's something that every farmer and every non-farmer can use. Just a couple quick tips. When you see nutrient deficiencies up at the top of the plant, it's typically sulfur or one of the micronutrients. When you see a nutrient deficiency on the lower part of the plant, it's N, P, or K. So that kind of gives you an idea of where to start. Also, you may be thinking, well, I don't know about this app because it's probably just for corn farmers or soybean farmers. We've got a lot of different crops on the app, so there's many different uses uh, depending on what you're growing. Take a look at the app and see it's a free download, so it's not going to cost you any money to take a look and see if the crop that you raise happens to be on the app. And finally, the other thing that I would point out is if you're short in one or more nutrients, your crop is going to become a water waster. So all of a sudden, if you're a little bit dry, that crop is going to continue pulling moisture out of the soil, trying to bring in that nutrient that it needs. And when it can't find it, it's just going to bring in more water and more water and more water until you finally run out. So stopping a nutrient stress is going to help with everything else down the road in your crop production. Well, another thing that will help with everything else down the road in crop production is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. Sometimes getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head to head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. 
Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. My dad and I's share of the operation is about three quarters seed beans for Stein. That's how we really got in with Stein and then we just started planting Stein corn and, and now we're 100% Stein. I just like the relationship of uh, uh, having the connection more, more with Stein and knowing what's going on. And you're gonna just kinda have to decide what you think works for you. And Stein's worked real well for us, real well. I choose Stein because Stein has yield. I love the fact that we get very little grain loss from the head. Other brands, other corn heads, we've seen that um, up to three, four bushel per acre in some instances where we have some dry corn. We're growing as much corn as we can. We don't want to be leaving this out in the field at harvest time. So the fellow's done a nice job of making sure we're capturing almost every kernel that we can. So yes, I would recommend the fellow head to other farmers. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. If you're an alfalfa producer, you know there are two key things, tonnage and quality. We're going to talk about how you can improve both of those today. Tonnage and quality are both a result of getting that fertility program just right. And if you're an alfalfa producer, you're putting a crop in that's going to be in the ground for several years. So before you seed that alfalfa the first time, solving your P and K problems could be a big benefit for you. Part of the reason why is that P and K applied on the soil surface, well, they just don't move down in the soil much at all. And alfalfa roots are historically deep. So if we can put that fertility down deep, as we're seeding that alfalfa or just before we seed that alfalfa, you give a food source down deep in the soil that your alfalfa crop will benefit from for years to come. Take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal App. When you look at alfalfa, you can see real quickly, it just takes a tremendous amount of fertility when you raise a good crop over a three to five year period. So if you're looking at, okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna remove X number of pounds of potash or potassium over that time, how should I put it on? A lot of people do talk about, well, I'll just throw a little bit on every year. And to Darren's point, it just doesn't move down in the soil very well. So look at this before you seed the alfalfa. The other thing you have to look at before you seed alfalfa, and the most important thing when it comes to soil fertility, is soil pH. Alfalfa hates low pHs. It does not like acid soil. So you've got to get that pH at least at a 6.5 or even just a little better than that. The other thing that lime application will do is provide plenty of calcium and available calcium is a key to good alfalfa growth as is sulfur and micronutrients. So make sure that you're running a complete soil analysis before you plant and then each season of that alfalfa crop's life. The other thing you need to do for that first season is get weed control as good as you can. So you want to start with a pre-emerge herbicide. I like a half a gallon of Eptam pre-emerge that has to be incorporated and it does a nice job on grasses and small seeded broadleaves. You're going to get good residual allowing you to get a nice thick stand to get that alfalfa crop started right. Darren mentioned Eptam and said it has to be incorporated, but I would say this, it's got to be instantly incorporated. Eptam will start evaporating almost immediately, so unless you're going to incorporate it within 10 minutes, you're going to be losing Eptam. Post-emerge, we don't have a lot of real great options other than for grass. You've got Select Max and many other grass killers that are really inexpensive. But in terms of broadleaf weeds, about all you have is Pursuitoraptor, and those are ALS herbicides, 
not real great on obviously the ALS resistant weeds. Uh, they do have a good weed spectrum, but again, when you miss the ALS resistant weeds, it's kind of tough. Then you've got Buctrel, which is good on a lot of weeds, but it's kind of weak on the pigweeds. So let's say you had Palmer pigweed or water hemp, well, Buctrel is not a real great answer. So some people say, well, I'll throw a little Buterac in. Well, Buterac is 2,4-DB, and that's hard on alfalfa. An ounce or two is about all you can use, and you will have leaf burn on the alfalfa. So what some people do is use Metribuzin or Velpar, uh, and there are some other products too that you can use in dormant alfalfa. I don't like any of those. I think they're too hard on the alfalfa. Personally, if it was me, and I was to the point where I said, okay, either I've got to use Velpar or Metribuzin, or I've got to rip the stand up, I'm tearing the stand up. Well, another thing that could cause you to lose some stand is insects. And we've got to control insects all the way through the season to be successful. It starts early in the season with alfalfa weevil larvae. I believe them to be the single worst alfalfa insect out there. In the larvae stage, there are many different products that can get them under control. Pyrethroids are quite often used. Uh, organophosphates can be used as well, depending on what's labeled in your area. Uh, so make sure you're out scouting early in the season watching for alfalfa weevil larvae. All right, we've mentioned fertility, weeds, and insects. There's one other category I guess we talk about real quick, that's diseases. Now, if you do the right thing fertility-wise, generally speaking, we don't have a lot of major disease issues in alfalfa, but nevertheless, there are some fungicides, like Headline, for example, that are labeled for use in alfalfa, and we've seen some good results, not only for disease control, but also for just general plant health with alfalfa. So it's something at least worth trying a little bit on your farm. Well, if you can keep all those leaves all the way down to the bottom of the plant attached to the plant and green, think about how much more value that brings to your hay product you're going to sell at the end of the season. So once again, when it comes to managing your alfalfa, there are a lot of things you can do to increase tonnage and quality, but it all starts with fertility, then take a look at weeds, insects, and diseases in terms of getting great control. And one of those weeds you may be after is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control it coming up later in the show. As weed resistance becomes more of a problem across the country, your crop protection program needs to stay flexible to be effective. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies wide selection of spray tips and nozzle configurations are available to keep your crop protection program right on technology, right on target. Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Everything in here has been exactly what they said it was going to be. I just wouldn't build anything but a morning. When the, the crew showed up, the building went up in seemed like days. The process couldn't have been easier. There was no, I'll need to get back with you. It was instantaneous. From beginning to end, the job is well done. The building is excellent and highly recommend Morton Buildings. Now's the time to save during Building Value Days. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Sometimes, getting the yield you want means a whole new game plan. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And with its unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. Find a nutrient coach near you at agroliquid.com. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season. Protecting and maximizing your yield potential. 
we're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. One of the things that's been the most fun for Darren and me over the last few years is we've gotten to know some of the top corn farmers from around the United States, guys that have been setting records with their yields and just learning a little bit from them, some of the things that they're doing, some of the tips that they've got for raising higher corn yields. Well, the number one thing, Brian, is getting a great stand established. And if yep. you can't get a great stand established, it's going to be tough to reach those high yields. Yeah, I think just about every one of those corn farmers has said that to us. Take a look at your stand. Every plant's got to have an equal opportunity and every plant needs to emerge right away. And to do that, you not only if you're doing tillage, have to do a great job of tillage. You can't have unevenness out there in the field. You've got to wait till the soil warms up, Brandon. That's a challenge in the north. Well, yeah, that's that's one of the things. So if you look at a lot of the world record corn producers, they farm way further south than what we do. And they want warm soil temps, and I get that. It's just unfortunately in our environment, we can't wait for soil temps to warm up to 55 or 60 degrees. We've got to plant when the soil temps 45 or 50 if we want top yields. So what we do to counteract that is use things like the biologicals, quick roots, use better fungicides here, use more insecticide, uh, both on the seed and in furrow. Uh, and then also you can use fungicide in furrow. Well, I don't care where you're at, the seed treatment usage is one of the key things that we see the top producers across the country and all crops doing is protecting that seed. We have to make sure we've got a healthy, viable seed and seedling if we want to succeed. All right, one of the things that's really stood out to me, because we've had some of these top corn farmers on our farm with plots the last couple years, and we intend to this next year as well. If you want to attend our Ag PhD Field Day, you can talk to a lot of these great farmers and see their plots in our operation. But what they've said to us is, hey, we really got to focus on micronutrients, both with soil tests and plant tissue analysis. It goes on the whole season. It's not just, all right, we got to worry about it for a few weeks. It's, we're going to worry about it even well after tassel, and we may still make an application if we're running into some problems out there. If our plant starts to show, hey, I'm not getting enough copper intake, or I'm not getting enough boron intake, we need to get out there and address that. And most of the time when we talk to farmers across the country, they'll say, oh, you got to be crazy. There's no way you're going to get a return on investment at that point. But if you can truly identify, hey, this is my yield limiting factor right now, and you address it, you are going to improve your yields. All right, what do you think, Darren, about fungicide use? Kind of any common themes that have stood out to you when you've been talking to these Early and often, guys? early and often. And a lot of the guys will say, hey, it's really critical that we do that early. But many farmers across the country will stop at a V4 to V7 application. We see some of the highest yielding guys going with an application in the V8 to V11 range and going again at tassel. And even after tassel, we're seeing some big gains uh, from farmers across the country. I know in Illinois this year, I was in some plots in September. It was a better than 30 bushel gain putting on an application two or three weeks after tasseling time. All right, so a lot of people talk to us about all oh, these high yield guys can't be making money. And I go, really? They're raising 350, 400, 500 bushel corn. They're making money. Yes, they have more inputs. And yes, not everything they do works every single time, but they're really focused on the little details. And I think that's probably the number one thing I would say. They're just paying attention to their fields, walking their fields, looking at data every single day during the growing season. They're just putting the time in. Yeah, they're, they're willing to work hard and stay after it. And I think that's the thing that we see in soybeans a lot as guys give up too early, but in corn, I didn't realize how we were giving up too early. We're, we're saying, man, we got to brown silk. Now we just let it coast and see what happens. No, there's nutrient applications that need to be made. There's other things that you have to watch out for in terms of diseases and other things that could impact your yield too. So stay after it, don't give up and pay attention to the details all the way through. Well, we've been fortunate to be able to meet with many of these great high yield corn farmers around the country. And one of the things they talk about too is having great weed control if you want great yields. We'll tell you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. 
talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Weed of the week for this show is Virginia Ground Cherry. Virginia Ground Cherry is one that Brian and I have been fighting since we were kids. We had it on our farm. I remember we were out looking at soybean fields and we were pulling weeds and our dad said, hey, watch out. There might be some black nightshade out there and I want to make sure we get all of that. We don't want to miss any of that because that's a bad, bad weed. So we got looking and sure enough, we saw this weed and we thought, wow, I haven't seen that one before. That must be what he's talking about. So we spent some time, we cleaned up the whole patch and, and we noticed it's a perennial weed and we were trying to pull them. Uh, that root system you know, ran underneath the soil and across. And so I remember going back in saying to, to dad, man, that was a perennial weed. I wasn't expecting that. And he's like, no, nightshade's an annual weed. What were you pulling? And so we went back out to the field and I showed him and sure enough, it was Virginia ground cherry, something at that point I had never heard of before. All right, with any perennial weed, you've got to do a good job getting down into that extensive root system. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of choices to do that. But we do have Roundup, which is excellent in a lot of situations. So whether it's burn down or in Roundup crops, you want to run with Roundup. But here are a couple of tips to controlling perennial weeds in these Roundup crops. Number one, you want to use a very strong rate. As high a labeled rate as you can get, you've got to get plenty of that product in the plant so you can get a lethal dose by the time it arrives at the growing points. Well, in addition to that, we don't like to see run lots of water with Roundup because we've got some of these weeds like Virginia ground cherry where the leaf's a little bit waxy and it's hard to get much into the weed. And here exactly is where a lot of guys fall down trying to control Virginia ground cherry is, well, I used a 22 ounce rate of Power Max and you know what, it kind of burned them off, but they came back. It didn't do a good job on them. No, you just didn't use the right rate. You got to use a strong rate when you got a perennial with a big root system like this. The other thing with Virginia ground cherry is your timing. If you can get out there and control it before your crop is up, well, hey, you can use as high a rate as labeled. If you're out in the middle of a crop season, well, then you're kind of limited on what you can do and you've just got to hold it back as long as you can and then try and stop it in the fall. Well, what Darren's talking about here is you can use a much higher rate in front of the crop than you can in a Roundup Ready crop. In many cases, it might be three quarts, four pound equivalent versus two quarts or a quart and a half, something like that. So when you can use uh, half again as much rate or double the rate, that's a big difference. And you want to make sure that you've got that effective rate that's out there. One other tip I guess I would throw out is avoid tillage when possible if you're going to spray Roundup in the next few weeks. What happens is you can kind of cut the plant, damage the plant a little bit. You want that plant actively growing. You want that entire root system tied together so the Roundup can get all the way through and kill the entire plant and kill it quickly. So burn down is your best option. Using Roundup is your best option whenever possible. In the non-crop areas, usually Dicamba and 2,4-D, it's going to take multiple applications each year just to hold this thing back. But that's in many cases about all you can do with Virginia ground cherry. You can certainly try some Tordon or something like that to get complete control, but Virginia ground cherry is definitely a difficult to control perennial weed. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Aerial fungicide and insecticide application means high speed, low volume, and high cost to reach the top of the plant canopy. But 360 Undercover is a low speed, high volume application system that provides precision placement under the crop canopy. You hit the target and get coverage on both the top and underside of leaves. Plus, 360 Undercover mounts to the boom of your self-propelled sprayer so you or your ag retailer can get more value from this important machine. Boost efficacy with 360 Undercover. Learn more at 360 Yield Center. Center.com. Sometimes getting the yield you want means a whole new game plan. What the 
Time to send in the A-Team. Agro-Liquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations and just the right amounts. And with its unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. Make a smart start with Agro-Liquid. Find a nutrient coach near you at agroliquid.com. For lower costs, higher production, Mantico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mantico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Introducing the Soilmax ZD48, the newest addition to the Soilmax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The Soilmax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Maintenance throughout the year is important, especially on equipment like tractors and combines. In today's Iron Talk, we'll focus on the hydraulic system with some tips that could help you this year and beyond. Let's be honest, if you notice that you need some hydraulic fluid in a piece of machinery that's otherwise ready to go to the field right now, what would you do? Well, it's a safe bet that you might be tempted to grab whatever's in the shop and top off your hydraulic fluid and just get the machine ready to go. Well, you may not notice a problem right away. Brake chatter, hydraulic fluid, foaming, or other problems could show up down the road. Since there are so many things that your hydraulic system will do, so many functions that it must perform in variable weather conditions throughout the year, the best place to start is with the manufacturer's recommended fluid. Now here are some other steps to keeping your system up to par. Use the right fluid always, so make sure you have it on hand. Number two, fix leaks, even the tiny ones, right away to keep dirt and other contaminants out. Number three, use manufacturer's filters to ensure the best fit and performance. Number four, change hydraulic fluid at regular intervals. Number five, inspect the hydraulic fluid, and you can even send it in for testing between changes to avoid surprises. So keep your hydraulic systems on top of your mind this busy season. With a little effort, you can avoid breakdowns and achieve peak performance throughout this spring and throughout the life of your machines. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time for our show today, but if you're looking for more agronomic information this week, we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week Farm Basics Iron Talk and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.